Hi everyone. How are you doing today? I hope you're all doing well as usual. Anyway, let's continue the discussion about Squid Game. Due to the large amount of material that needs to be explained, I split this into two parts. This is the second part. If you haven't watched the first part, I highly recommend you watch it first by clicking the link in the description box below. For those who have watched the first part, don't hesitate to continue this video. Okay, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The Netflix series Squid Game is about poor people taking part in horrific games when elite VIPs watch the show for entertainment. Through messages and symbolism, Squid Game reveals what is truly about. The incurable sickness of the elite. For the final three games, the organizers welcome VIPs, ultra-rich elite people who came to watch the game's life. Through symbolism, the series indicates who exactly these people are. This snapshot shows the VIPs walk around with animal masks on their faces, a practice the occult elite has been engaging in for centuries. Left, one of the VIPs. Right, Helene de Rothschild at a 1972 occult elite ball. This picture from the Church of Satan website shows a bunch of people wearing animal masks, symbolizing the embrace of humans' animalistic side. Appropriately enough, these VIPs are obsessed with the two core elements of humans' animalistic side. Lust and blood. The lounge where the VIPs sit and watch poor people die is pure decadence. Humans are used as furniture and decoration, another way of portraying the dehumanization of the masses. This VIP is immediately attracted to the server who brings him drinks. He needs to have him right now. The VIP brings the server to the VIP room to be satisfied. That room is covered with art that reflects the VIP's advanced state of perversion. After five games, there are only three players left. They are the elite players. Consequently, they are given fancy clothes and are treated to a feast. No more boiled eggs for these three. The setting of this feast could not be more symbolic. For the feast, the tables are placed in the shape of a triangle with light fixtures in the center. That triangle is placed atop a checkerboard floor. Also, there are two pillars of light on each side. This is all blatant Masonic symbolism. This is a classic Masonic symbols. The triangle with the all-seeing eye, the checkerboard floor, and the twin pillars. This scene conveys the occult and ritualistic nature of this game. In Freemasonry, the checkboard floor is the transformative surface where rituals take place. The most powerful ritual of all. Blood sacrifice. And that's exactly what the VIPs want to see happen. At the end of the feast, the workers remove everything, except for the steak knives. The three remaining players lie on their beds around the ritualistic floor while holding their knives. Also, notice that the walls are decorated with images depicting the horrific games the players have to go through. This is kind of like Netflix using entertainment to remind the masses of how they are being controlled by the elite. As expected, one player slashes the throat of another player who dies. The blood sacrifice to the elite is complete. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. If one fast forwards a whole lot of stabbing, we learn that Guy Hun ultimately wins the game. Therefore, he sent back to the real world with the equivalent of $38 million in his bank account. Does he finally live it up? Nope. He's basically dead inside and spends about a year mopping around. Then, Guy Hun receives a symbolic invitation. The meeting is on the seventh floor of a building called Sky, 30 minutes before Christmas. 
and several spiritual schools including the Kabbalah, Seventh Heaven, which is literally translated to Seventh Sky in some languages, means the highest heaven, where God and the most exalted angels dwell. Then, Guy Hun finds the old man he played with on his deathbed. In the major plot twist, we learn that the old man is actually super rich and the creator of the games. When Guy Hun asks him why he created such a horrific system, he answers. If you have too much money, it doesn't matter what you buy, eat, or drink. It all gets boring. All of my clients eventually started saying the same things when we talked. Everybody felt that there was no joy in their lives anymore. And so, we decided to get together, and started asking what could we all do to finally have some fun. Does this explain why the elite partakes in such extreme and depraved activities, i.e. Epstein Island? In any case, for this old man, simply watching the games wasn't enough anymore. He wanted to actually be part of it to feel alive. When one rewatches the series, one realizes that this old man, aka player number 001, had a great influence in the game, while also apparently being immune to actually getting killed. He was the equivalent of an elite plant amongst the masses. For instance, he had the final and deciding vote during the democratic process. Also, it was his screams that prompted the workers to stop the night of murders after the egg incident. Ai Hun apparently comes out of his meeting in the seventh sky a changed man. To reflect this profound change, he dyes his hair red, which is also the color representing sacrifice and initiation in occult circles. Then, he decides to board a plane to finally go see his daughter. However, at the last second, he turns back. Ai Hun wants to return to the game, because he says that he needs to know who is behind it. So, instead of seeing his own daughter, Guy Hun wants to go back to the madness. That's crazy. The real reason for him wanting to back is, he is now infected with the sickness of the elite, represented by his red hair. He feels dead inside, unless he partakes in the extreme thrills of the game. The ultimate proof of this is the fact, the guy who oversees the squid game was a past winner. He also got infected, and needed to go back. In short, the ending is not happy. Everyone loses the game. Except for the elite watching the games. Squid Game became the biggest series in Netflix history for several reasons. Beyond its shocking violence and gripping story, the series explores several themes such as religion, human nature, and the pitfalls of economic inequalities. While several news sources interpreted Squid Game as a critique of capitalism, they seemed to overlook the most obvious and glaring theme. Society being ruled by a sick occult elite that takes pleasure in dividing, controlling, dehumanizing, infantilizing, and outright abusing the masses. And that story doesn't end with a sick game being taken down, it ends with a winner turning into them. In the end, we witness a form of Stockholm Syndrome, where people who are abused, end up identifying with the abuser. And that's kind of the goal of the series. The viewers end up enjoying watching the sick form of entertainment the same way the VIPs enjoy watching people getting killed. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job all is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.